what's going on everybody and welcome to your 28th HTML and CSS tutorial and in this tutorial we'll be creating a fancy table and we'll be styling it with CSS so that the table and all its tags and the attributes we might be using are completely valid in HTML5 document um, so let's say we want to create a table on uh, let's say you want to okay so let's say we want to gather all the information about browsers their engines uh, and their number of users worldwide so let's see how we create that so before starting with this tutorial I would like to introduce you to three another tags inside the table tag and those are t head t body and t foot so these three tags are incredibly useful because when you are working with large table sets then these would uh, provide you the categorization of your header of the table the last line the footer of the table and the body of the table uh, you are writing the content in so let's see how to do that so first of all we write t head so t head would technically mean all the stuff which would be the header of the table so let's say I create a table row which would be obviously one only and I close the table row and inside the data I say the browser name whoa I guess I spelled it wrong B R O W S E R name and the TD would be closed then I want the table data the next one to be the users online on that browser and the next thing I would like to have is the engine of browser so now if I reload this right here whoa I'm still on 27 you see I'm lazy and if I reload this right here then I just see an ugly long string of these three words or maybe six or maybe seven but who cares so now let's add some more data to this table and since we are done with our t head we'll just close it down here and would start t body now t body would signify that we are working with the body now and the head is closed so all the information we needed in the top uh, row is in the t head so now let's write something in t body let's give it tr and let's close the tr one and first of all let's go with google chrome okay so the browser name is google chrome and keep matching that then the users online I don't know that's just an uh, approximate guess maybe 500 million plus I really don't know so the next thing we have is the engine of the browser and I guess Google after uh, the recent update it's using blink engine previously it was on WebKit but now it's on blink so this information is about one browser and let's copy and paste that a bit so let's say four would go let's uh, Mozilla Firefox 500 let's uh, give it 300 and let's say it's working on gecko and uh, what next IE and IE has more users than you think so let's say a hundred million it's a rough guess and IE works on Trident T R I D E N T and this is Microsoft engine but uh, let's say to ignore this because that would make it a bit long so the next browser the next browser we have um, let's say opera and opera maybe a hundred million as well and opera works on blink or webkit let me think 
Opera was actually on Blink actually yeah Opera is on Blink so we have got five browsers in our data set and now let's see it on the browser so this kind of looks like a table bit but it's not a table so now let's uh, in the styles first of all create something so let's say table tr and let's give it th actually so that the headings kind of becomes bold automatically so here we go and tr th and that's pretty much everything and td as well sorry and let's give it a broader off uh, 2 pixels solid black let's reload and we are good to go we have got a border and that's a pretty much dark but never mind okay so now let's customize the individual elements so let's say we've got th and I want it to be font style and just go through the commands I'm typing the properties because there are many many properties in CSS and even till date I can say to you honestly I don't even know all the properties of CSS I'm always learning with you guys and so you are and let's write font style italic and this would technically convert your font to a italic, uh, italic style give your font to italic style and that's pretty much I want in the header and okay so let's make some changes to this let's say I want color white to header and in the T head now that's why T head is useful because now we are actually customizing let's give it T head TH customizing the header header background and everything inside the header differently from the body and let's say I give it a background of black let's say black and okay so let's see how it looks and okay not bad but not good as well so the next thing I need is to re reduce that damn spacing so border spacing should be zero pixel I don't want it to add any default spacing in the border and now we have got a dark border so let's reduce the border to a pixel let's reload this and we have got a nice border now and now let's just increase font size a little bit this is font size now font size would actually increase your font size by the amount of pixels you specify would set the font size to that let's reload and I guess that's very specified lower than the default so let's uh, give it 20 and by default let's say font family the font family would accept a font name and would apply that font to all your selectors and down in the selectors as well so font family is inheritable so let's reload this and we have got a nice Calibri font and since Calibri is already installed in my computer I can just use it directly and the round way to use uh, non-installed fonts in your web would be I, I would be teaching them in the future tutorials so now we have got uh, these three and let's create some kind of border to separate these and let's say where we have the th yeah right here let's say border right should be let's say two pixels solid now I remember a bunch of colors because I have been coding from a while so this would be a little whitish type and it's appearing right here as well so I don't want it to appear on the last TD so what I'll do is what I can do actually I could add a class no border and I'll just do dot no border border zero and to be more specific let's refresh and we have got rid of that border and let's add a little bit of padding as well to the th padding left now in the last tutorial I told you about padding now padding 10 pixel 
means that apply padding 10 pixel in every direction so let's say if you want to give a padding only in a particular direction so what you'll do is padding left you have got padding left to apply padding to the left only you have got padding top to apply on top right and bottom so the order it works like if I do like 10 pixel 0 10 pixel 0 so it means apply padding 10 pixel to top the that means the 10 pixel padding should be applied to top then a space to separate the value then 0 to the left then 10 pixel to the right uh, 10 pixel to the bottom sorry and then 0 to the right so this is like top value left value bottom value right value and you could independently apply this value with using padding left padding right uh, padding right actually padding bottom and padding what's are left top yeah so instead of using these four lines of code we just make use of one and if you want to give all of these a same value then we use make use of just one value and it would automatically apply on all of the rest so let's give it a padding left of 10 pixel and let's see what the result are so now we have got a 10 pixel padding left on each of the th and I would like to have a padding right of 15 pixels and padding bottom of 5 pixel padding top of 5 pixel and that's pretty much it and I could just reduce these three lines to 5 pixel 0 15 pixel uh, 5 pixel 0 5 pixel and 15 pixel and uh, let's just remove these three and let's reload this okay so padding top is 5 left uh, this should be it sorry uh, right left uh, top right bottom left whoa that's embarrassing top right bottom and left let's reload and here we need and top right bottom whoa so that's finally it and here we go and I guess I should apply a little bit padding to left as well so that it looks nice let's say 5 pixel only let's reload this and we're good to go so now our heading is ready uh, let's customize the TRs now in the body section uh, let's give it a class of uh, the alternate classes like alt class let's say now this is one two then three skip three then four alt and let's say now to t body tr dot alt background should be gray color should be white let's reload this and alternate on the alternate basis we have got white and gray background as colors and by default I would like to have background should be I'll remove the alt one so that it doesn't override light gray and color should be white let's reload this and we have got light gray and let's keep the color black and why the heck I'm um, just scroll down to the bottom of the file every time I click I'll see you do it let's reload this and ah, looks good so we can actually apply a little bit padding to the TDs as well T body TR TD padding 10 pixel pretty much it and now we have a nice little table which gives us an information about the browser its users online and the engine the browser is using so that's how we pretty much create a table in HTML and always remember that we are just doing tables in HTML just for organizing the data and not creating the web pages layouts themselves so that was a small little 
tutorial series on tables and from the next tutorial onwards we'll be again starting with some new and awesome HTML and CSS stuff. So till then stay tuned with me and don't forget to subscribe.